Hey everyone, today we are going to talk about the Canon EOS RP and the electronic front curtain shutter issues that come along with it. If you haven't seen my previous video on this issue, I'll put a link up above and definitely check that out because that kind of will preface this video. So in this video, I've added images and the exact camera settings on each image so that I can show you exactly when you're gonna to start to see that degradation of the out of focus areas in your images. We'll go through how much changing your shutter speed and your aperture will affect those out of focus highlights, as well as some samples of how to remedy the issue. But before I go any further into this video, I wanted to thank you guys again. I'm now over 100 subscribers, which is awesome, and I'm super happy about it. Um, I will post a link right now to my previous video. Go ahead and check out that video if you want to know how to enter to win a free landscape print. So before we get into the sample images, let's just quickly go into the three most common types of shutters that you're going to run into in this modern mirrorless world. So the one that we're all really familiar with coming from DSLRs is the mechanical shutter. So with a mechanical shutter, you have a physical shutter that will open and then another one that will close to end the exposure. So just like the name implies, the shutter shock is caused by the actual mechanical shutter um, coming down and vibrating the camera. This has been more of an issue within the past few years since we've come out with higher resolution cameras that remove that anti-aliasing filter. So now when photographers are running into this shutter shock issue, it's definitely more pronounced because we have higher resolution cameras and we're looking at those images on higher resolution screens. So one way to mitigate the effects of the shutter shock is to remove that mechanical shutter. So now we're going to get into the electronic front curtain shutter. Again, I'll just call it an EFCS to shorten up the name. But with this type of shutter, you have an electronic first curtain shutter followed up by an actual mechanical shutter. So since the first shutter is electronic, you're not going to get the shutter shock that is going to affect your exposure in a negative way. Now, like I talked about in my previous video, which I will link above again, the issue that you get from the EFCS is that under certain situations, your out of focus areas or the bokeh is going to start to degrade. And I'll show you actual image samples of that in a second. And finally, we have the fully electronic shutter. So with this shutter, you are not using any mechanical parts. Basically, the start and the end of the exposure both occur electronically. So there are definitely a lot of issues that can come from the electronic shutter. Um, you have things like rolling shutter. So if you are shooting moving subjects, you're going to see that the subjects tend to become deformed in the image. Certain types of artificial light, you'll see a lot of banding in the image. And you're also not able to use flash with a fully electronic shutter. So basically, I would only use a fully electronic shutter if I absolutely had to be completely silent. Um, like if I was in a church or if I had a client telling me that they just didn't want to be disrupted by the noise of the camera. So bringing all of those three different shutters together, let's review how it affects uh, individuals that are thinking about buying or have purchase the Canon EOS RP. Again, the Canon EOS RP does not have a mechanical shutter, so you are limited to the EFCS or the electronic shutter. And honestly, it's pretty much like you're just limited to the EFCS. So for this camera, Canon really limited the way that you could actually use a fully electronic shutter. The two ways that you can actually access the electronic shutter are um, you go into scene mode and select silent shooting, or you go into the menu and enable focus stacking and set it to narrow. So all in all, I think that if I were to be able to go back in time before I purchased any of my Canon equipment, I would probably go with the Canon EOS R just to have avoided all of these issues with the EFCS. I like the option that you can use a mechanical shutter with the Canon EOS R. 
Right now, I just don't think it would be a good time to trade in my RP for the Canon EOS R. I know that the R5 and the R6 are coming out later this year. Well, hopefully. So anyone in a similar position as me, I wanted to show you some ways that you can mitigate the effects of the EFCS. The two main issues being the bokeh degradation and the banding when you're using a flash. Okay, so we're starting at 1 one hundredth of a second and going to 1 four thousandth of a second, and we're staying at aperture f1.2. I know that was kind of fast, but feel free to play through that again, but basically you're going from this at 1 one hundredth to this at 1 four thousandth of a second, so shutter speed definitely has a big effect. So to fix this, you could pop on an ND filter. As you see here, it brings the shutter speed down to 1 eightieth of a second, and we don't see any more of that clipping. So with this series of photos, we keep the shutter speed the same at 1 4,000th of a second, but change the aperture. Now this is pretty interesting because you can still see that there's some clipping even at a smaller aperture. Naturally, it seems less pronounced due to the decrease in the size of the out of focus highlight. And with this last set of photos, we're going from 1 1,000th of a second to 1 4,000th of a second at f1.8. Same thing though, when we get to the fastest shutter speed of this camera, which is 1 4,000th of a second, we still see some of that highlight clipping. So it's good to know that you still might be affected by this issue if you're shooting with your 1.8 primes. So here we have an example of banding from the artificial light uh, when I was using a fully electronic shutter. And with this next set of images, you'll see just how sensitive the camera is to rolling shutter. I was hardly moving the camera. And finally, we just have a example of what the camera decided to do when I set it to silent mode. It, I believe it decreased the aperture to f2.8. Again, I would be hesitant to use this just because I like having control over all of my camera settings.